Okay, we have another one we're graphing and we're finding the information, a rational function. X-intercept, there's, uh, for factoring wise, there's nothing to really do on this one except to do uh, X over X plus two and X minus two, nothing cancels. So that's as far as we need to go on that one. If we do X-intercept, X-intercept means that you're gonna take the top part set equal to zero. Now in this case, the only thing we have on top is X. So we just set X equal to zero, that's it. So it means that the x-intercept is going to be zero. If we do y-intercept, the y-intercept is where you put a zero in for x. And if you do that, you get zero over zero squared minus four if you use the original one. That gives you a zero over negative four. If zero is on top, that's okay. That's going to end up being zero. So again, it goes through the origin. You could have also just automatically put down zero because it went, the x-intercept is zero. That means y-intercept is going to have to be zero as well. So now we have that, now our vertical asymptote. Okay, vertical asymptote, you're gonna set the bottom one equal to zero. The bottom one has already been factored already. So we're gonna take x plus two, x minus two equals zero. We'll solve for that. And you're gonna get x is equal to plus or minus two. That would be your vertical asymptote. Your vertical asymptote, x is equal to two and x is equal to negative two, or you can write it as a plus or minus. Then the last one we wanna do is your horizontal asymptote. So horizontal asymptote, uh, we have to look at those different rules. We always go back to the original one, the non-factor form we're gonna look at. Highest power on top is a one, the highest power on the bottom is two. So in this case, your n is less than m if you look at the rules in the notes. This would be an example of the first rule, the highest power on top is less than the highest power on the bottom, which means that automatically your horizontal asymptote is going to be zero. So I have uh, y equals zero for that one. So now that I have the information complete, I'm now ready to draw the graph. So you wanna make sure you get this information down and I'm going to put the graph up. And we begin by plotting our zero, zero. We know it goes through zero, zero there because of our intercept, that's your x and y intercept. It also goes through plus two and it also goes through negative two. So plus two and minus two. Okay, that takes care of the two vertical asymptotes. Now horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Okay, so y equals zero means that your x-axis is actually going to be uh, your asymptote line, so we have this. Well, if we take a look at this, this graph actually doesn't provide us with much information at all to work with. We don't know if the graph is gonna be drawn here or here. This one, we don't know if it's here or here also. And then in the middle, we've got these different shapes. And actually, it could be any of the four shapes in there because it could go like this, but it could also go like that because there's one spot. So the, the parabola could actually come down and hit that. So this graph does not provide us enough information. So we have to use test points in order to determine where things are. So for this one, I'm actually gonna have to use, I'm gonna use four different test points. I'm gonna test one in between each of these regions. I'll test one to the left of the, the vertical here, which means I'm gonna test negative three. I'm gonna test three, so that'll take care of the two end pieces. But then I also need to test in the middle too. I wanna to test something between the vertical one and the zero, so I'm gonna test uh, negative one and also gonna test one. So I need to test all those different points. Okay, so again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test each of these, I'm testing negative three, I'm gonna test negative one, I'm gonna test one, and then I'm gonna test uh, three. These are all the x values that I'm testing all in between here, and they'll give me y values, and I'll be able to see exactly where the graph is gonna be drawn. Okay, so if I test three, I'm putting that into, you can either use the original one or the factor one, it doesn't matter, I'll use the original one. Negative three over negative three squared minus four, means that we get negative three over uh, five. So negative three fifths is the y value, so therefore negative three and negative three fifths is the actual point that's gonna be on here. Negative three and negative three fifths is going to be this dot right there, so that tells me that the, this graph is gonna begin by going down like this. Next, I wanna test x is equal to negative one. Negative one over negative one squared minus four. We get negative one over negative three, which equals one third. 
written as a coordinate. That would be negative one and one third. Negative one and one third would be about right here. Still, I don't have enough information to know which of the four shapes it would be because it could go down and do this or it could come down and go up. So I don't really know yet what exactly that's going to look like until I do the next test point. Testing one, I have one over one square minus four. That gives us negative one third. So I have one and negative one third would be the next coordinate. So one and negative one third, it's going to be here. Now I have enough information to determine that by looking at these different shapes. The only one that, that fits the test points that I've already done already will be this one right here, this negative cube graph. So it's going to follow this one. It'll hit these three points, go down, and look like that. Then finally, I'm going to test the, the last one here. I want to put in a 3. So if I put 3 in there, that's 3 over 3 squared minus 4. And that means that you're going to get 3 fifths. So 3 fifths would be that one. So 3 and 3 fifths would be the actual coordinate. So over 3 and up 3 fifths would be about right here. And that tells us that the graph itself is going to be drawn above like that. So again, this one, we had to do a lot of test points because initially the graph that was provided didn't give us enough information, so we had to do, we had to do these four test points to determine the overall shape of the graph.